three-part video series about improving diabetes management and long-term care presented by Superior Health Quality Alliance. The recording was developed for healthcare workers with an interest in providing care to individuals with diabetes residing in long-term care settings. This first video will address the pathophysiology of diabetes. You can watch them in order or based upon your interest. The objectives for the learning session are to explain the pathophysiology of diabetes and the impact type 2 diabetes has on older individuals, along with the cost that is associated with it. Before we discuss diabetes, it's important to understand the impact it has on our country. Diabetes is an epidemic, and by addressing it, we can improve health outcomes, reduce health care costs, and enhance overall public health. Early detection is crucial because diabetes can lead to chronic kidney disease and end-stage renal diseases, which are major burdens on the Medicare system. Pre-diabetes is a condition where blood sugar levels are higher than normal, but not yet high enough to be classified as type 2 diabetes. It serves as a warning sign that you have an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. There are typically no signs or symptoms with prediabetes, so it can go undetected unless you are looking for it. The financial burden of diabetes is substantial. In 2022, the total estimated cost of diagnosed diabetes was $412.9 billion. This includes $306.6 billion in direct medical expenses and $106.3 billion in lost productivity. Diabetes is a chronic disease that occurs when the body doesn't produce enough insulin or can't use it properly. For this presentation, we're going to focus on the fundamentals. In a functioning body, the pancreas releases or produces and releases insulin and glucagon. These hormones regulate your blood sugar levels. It takes the glucose from your blood and moves it into your cells. And once glucose is in the cell, then it can be converted into energy. If it remains in your bloodstream, it can build up. And that's when the pancreas does not secrete enough insulin. When a person has diabetes, the pancreas's ability to produce and regulate insulin is impaired. Diabetic ketoacidosis is a life-threatening complication of diabetes that occurs when the body produces too many ketones. Ketones are acids produced by the liver when the body breaks down fat for fuel instead of using insulin to allow blood sugar into the cells. DKA is typically triggered by a lack of insulin, which can be due to missed insulin doses, infections, or other stressors. The symptoms develop quickly. They can be um, excessive thirst or frequent urination, nausea, vomiting. Diagnosis involves blood tests to check your blood sugar levels, your ketone level levels, and blood acidity. Treatment is considered, well, DKA is considered a medical emergency, so treatment requires hospitalization with fluid and electrolyte replacement, along with insulin therapy to reduce that blood sugar level. To prevent it, you should regularly check your blood sugar levels and take your medications as prescribed. And of course, always maintaining a healthy lifestyle will help. Hypoglycemia is also known as low blood sugar, and it occurs when the level of glucose in the blood drops below the normal range. Glucose is the primary source of energy for your body, especially for your brain. It can be the result of taking too much insulin or too much of your diabetes medication. 
Mild symptoms are shakiness, sweating, hunger, but more severe symptoms include confusion, blurred vision, seizures, and a loss of consciousness. The best and quickest way to treat it is to take some something high in sugar, such as fruit juice or soda pop. This immediate treatment will quickly elevate your sugar levels. Long-term treatment is that you need to start identifying and treating the underlying causes of hypoglycemia. To prevent it, you need to check your blood sugars regularly. Eat regular meals and snacks. Don't be skipping meals. And follow your healthcare provider's instructions regarding your medications. Hypoglycemia Glycemia requires prompt treatment to prevent serious complications. To recap, type 2 diabetes is a chronic condition that affects the way the body processes blood sugar, named glucose. In this form of diabetes, the body either resists the effects of the insulin, the hormone, um, that regulates it and moves that sugar into your cells, or doesn't produce an produce enough insulin to maintain normal glucose levels. This leads to elevated blood sugar levels, which can cause various symptoms, such as increased thirst, frequent urination, fatigue. Over time, unmanaged type 2 diabetes can result in serious complications, including heart disease, kidney damage, nerve damage, and vision problems. Managing diabetes typically involves life style changes such as eating healthy, regular exercise, maintaining a healthy weight along with medications or insulin therapy. Early detection and effective management are crucial for preventing complications and maintaining a good quality of life. Several factors can increase the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Your weight is probably the biggest factor. Being overweight or obese puts you at a significant risk of developing type 2 diabetes. It also depends on how you store your fat and whether you have family history. Your age, um, as we get older, more and more of us develop diabetes. The ethnicity group that you are in can be a factor. Having prediabetes, that's the warning sign that you are at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. If you had gestational diabetes or a baby weighing more than 9 pounds upon delivery can put you at risk. Women with PCOS are at a higher risk. And finally, high blood pressure. Addressing these risk factors through lifestyle changes, such as maintaining a healthy weight, staying active, and eating a balanced diet can help reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. We're focusing on type 2 because the percentage of adults with diabetes increases with age, reaching 29.2% among those age 65 and older. The best way to manage the disease is to have regular checkups, and that includes your blood pressure and getting your weight, plus running labs like blood sugar tests or A1C cholesterol to find out what is your HDL and LDL, um, urine tests, kidney function. And you should have personalized treatment goals that fit your individual lifestyle and health status. You should avoid hypoglycemia. It is very dangerous. So be sure to avoid those overly aggressive treatments to keep that blood sugar low. Medication management is also huge. Keep it simple. Lifestyle medications. I think you're sensing a theme here. Healthy diet and regular exercise. Support and education, I think this is huge. You need to involve your caregiver or your family members. The more they know, the more they can support you in eating healthy meals and eating regularly, as well as exercising. 
watch out for geriatric syndromes that, you know, those can impact, you know, the brain functioning. So dementia, for example, and the ability of the patient to manage their disease. Diabetes is the leading cause of kidney failure and new cases of blindness among adults in the United States. It's also associated with increased risk of heart disease because excess of blood sugars directly impact the heart, kidneys, liver, lungs, and brain. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is common among individuals with metabolic syndrome and a significant risk factor for developing diabetes. It is estimated to be the eighth leading cause of death in the United States in 2023. Screening asymptomatic adults can allow for earlier detection, diagnosis, and treatment with the ultimate goal of controlling those glucose levels and preventing damage to the body's organs. In summary, hyper Hypoglycemia and DKA are serious complications of diabetes that require quick and immediate action. DKA, you need to be hospitalized. Managing type 2 for those that are over the age of 65 does have unique challenges, but it still can be done. It is the eighth leading cause of death in America in 2023. And by taking that individualized approach, um, older adults with type two diabetes, they can manage their condition effective, effectively and maintain a great quality of life. Here are resources uh, to further support the content we've discussed today. If you have any questions about this video series or others, please contact us at info at superiorhealthqa.org. Thank you.